Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. So inshallah today we are going to start with ayah number 99 and go up to ayah number 114 inshallah. The surah started with a discussion on the Quran, right? Making it clear that the purpose of revelation to the Prophet ﷺ was not that he might be afflicted by it or that it makes his life difficult. That's what we did in the first part of the surah, right? And then it went into the story of Musa ﷺ. Reason? To show the care that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took of Musa ﷺ and his brother Harun ﷺ and Bani Israel. To whom? To Rasul ﷺ and his community. Why? Because of the persecution that was happening, right? Now that the story has been told, the three episodes that were taken from the life of Musa alayhi salam and related to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the surah goes back to speaking about the Quran, its role in our lives and the fate which is bound to be suffered by those who turn their backs to it or the bliss that the believers are going to enjoy. So we're taking the conversation back to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the Quran, which is what the surah began with, inshallah. So the reasons for mentioning all these stories, the reasons for the Quranic history in this uh, surah, particularly the story of Musa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَذَلِكَ نَقُصُ عَلَيْكَ After having completed the story of Musa alayhi salam, Allah says, just as we have narrated to you or uh, related to you, meaning the three episodes from the life of Musa alayhi salam, right? Like we have mentioned these stories. Min amba'i ma qad sabaka. From the news, amba means news, from the news of that which has preceded, meaning from the past. وَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ مِنْ لَدُنَّا ذِكْرًا We have certainly given, qad, we have certainly given to you from us, min ladunna. What's the source? From us, a reminder. And this reminder is referring to what? Quran. Quran is described as a reminder because it reminds us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his signs, messages, as well as signs and miracles that were given to the people of the past, which is the story that it is referring to over here. So all, all these stories that you find, they are in this dhikra, in this Quran, and the purpose is what? So that you may be reminded of the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, ayah number 100. Man a'arada anhu, whoever turns away from it, from what? From this dhikra, from this reminder. And this reminder refers to what? Stories like this, right? Whoever turns away, a'arada, to turn away willfully, all right? Ignore it completely. Man a'arada anhu, fa innahu yahmilu, then indeed he will carry on the day of judgment. What will he carry on the day of judgment? Wizra, an enormous burden. Where has this word come before? I've mentioned it to you. Uh, I've highlighted it for you over here. You know, when uh, Bani Israel was presenting the excuse to Musa alayhi salam as to what led them to worshipping the calf, they had mentioned, awzaran, but we were burdened by the weight of our uh, we were we were burdened by the weight weight of what it was referring to the jewelry of uh, the community of uh, Fir'aun, right? So there also we had the word auzar. Auzar was is the plural form, and over here you're seeing the singular form. And like I mentioned it even over there that this word usually comes for the description of um, uh, or to allude to the meaning of sin. All right, a heavy load of sin, wizra. And then in Ayah 101, so over here in 100, let me just recap it really quickly. The one who turns away from it, yani the reminder, then indeed he will carry on the day of judgment a heavy load of sin, right? And then in Ayah 101, describing their uh, duration or describing their stay on the uh, on, on the day of judgment, Khalidina Fiha, they are going to remain in it forever khalidina wasa alahum yawm al qiyamah himla wasa alahum yawm al qiyamah this is um, an expression himla this is an expression which means what an evil burden to carry on that day this is burden okay sa'a 
evil what an evil burden to carry when on the day of judgment and what is about what is about that day of judgment what is the description of that day of judgment very briefly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions yawma yunfakhu fisur the day when the trumpet will be blown and this is referring to the second trumpet we know that um there are various opinions one opinion says that there there, there are going to be three um the they're going to be three trumpets and then the other one says that there are going to be two meaning the number of times the trumpet will be blown one says three the other says two regardless that's a separate discussion but this one is referring to the second trumpet and what will happen after the second trumpet is blown and we are going to gather the wicked on the on the day yawma with blue faces now what does this expression mean blue faces this is an expression for grief sorrow and even fear right so that's what it's describing the state of these uh, disbelievers on the day of judgment and what is it what what else is going to happen then with these people on that day or what else is it what other state is it that we are going to find them in uh, this is the first state that is described which is that they're going to be in a very fearful state and then i 103 means to whisper Okay, to whisper with one another, Bab the Farul for the grammar students, right? They will with they will whisper to one an, to one another. Subhanallah, they're going to be in such a fearful state that they will not be even able to raise their voices. Now, as they're whispering, what is the subject of their whispers? They're saying, illa bistum illa ashra. They will say to one another, you did not remain on this earth except for 10 days. They're whispering about the duration of their life, of their life on the face of this earth. They say 10 days. Imagine, these are criminals. These are the disbelievers, the wretched ones who thought this life is going to be forever. For them, this life was the start and the end. And they are saying to them, this worldly life, at when they are standing on the day of judgment, when they're facing their ultimate reality, this dunya be life, this worldly life seems so short to them. The discussion continues amongst themselves. This 104 is just they themselves talking to each other. Nahnu, so this Nahnu is referring to the people over here, you know, the ones who are whispering. They say, Nahnu a'lamu bima yaqulun. We know best what um, they are saying. We know best what they are saying, meaning these are the people, this we are the most here. Um, amthaluhum, okay? It says, Idh yaqulu amthaluhum tariqatan. Um, when the most exemplary, amthaluhum means the most exemplary, or their leaders, or their chiefs, the ones who led the show in this dunya, right? The ones who they followed, those people amongst themselves. So as they're whispering, they're saying, okay, we were in dunya just for 10 days, and then another group who were supposedly their bosses in this uh, dunya, they say that, um, well, that's not quite true. They say, illa bistum illa yawma, you all stayed on it only for a day so they even present a shorter uh, time span like depending on or um, as a result of what they're witnessing in front of them and uh, having experienced the truth of their existence or the truth having witnessed truth in standing in front of them the reality hits them the reality of what they were constantly reminded when they were back in dunya but when they were given those reminders when they were given those zikra what was their attitude and that's what we see in the next portion right allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds of their attitude while they were in dunya while they were told hey this life don't get too in involved in it don't get too immersed in it live this life with the goal of living for eternity in the akhirah li li live in such a way that you don't have to deal with the con you don't you don't have to deal with hardship when you go to the akhirah at that time how did they respond? So here in ayah number 105, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the statements that they made while they were in dunya. They were, they were in dunya. The statements of mockery and the statements of sarcasm, right? Sarcasm, mockery. Here. Wa yes alunaka. And they used to ask you, meaning Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who these same people, 
right? They used to ask you in dunya about the mountains. So you would talk to them. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa would talk about the akhirah, the standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mizan, which is the scales, the presentation of good deeds, bad deeds, etc. And they would be like, oh, so you're saying everything is going to be dust? Then what about these mountains, right? Simply to divert the attention just to move away from the fact or just to give Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a hard time. So here, فَقُلْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, would, uh, would, would say to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to respond to their question by saying, يَنْسِفُهَا Rabbi Nasfa. Yan, nasfa yansifu basically means to wipe out, right? And uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being told or instructed to answer to these people, to these questions while they were doing it in a state of, uh, with with an attitude of mockery, um, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say to them, my Rabb, Rabbi, my Rabb would wipe them out completely. Maf'ul mutlaq here, the verb and the noun form, all right, would wipe them out completely. Nasafa yansifu means to wipe and scatter, okay? And then in ayah number 106, فَيَذَرُهَا قَعْن صَفْصَفَ فَيَذَرُهَا and Safsafa mean and he would leave it. Qaran Safsafa meaning he would leave the earth. The how over here referring to the earth. He would leave the earth even, qaran, even and flat. Okay? More description about that. 107. La Torafiha, you will not see in it. Ivajan, any kind of crookedness or deviations, right? Wala amta, meaning any kind of elevations even. So it will be completely flat. That's basically what is referring to over here. There's not going to be any curves, dips, or elevations. Okay? Continuing. Now, continuing, the con the conversation goes back to the Day of Judgment. So let me just quickly tell you what's happening here. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the Day of Judgment, right? What's going to be the state of these people on the Day of Judgment? And it's, it's talking about the whispers that will happen between each one of them, right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds them of what their attitude was in dunya. Like these same people who are now so fearful, right? Their faces have turned blue. What was their attitude in dunya? And then after reminding them of that, he takes it back to the Day of Judgment. Yawma idhin, on that day, yattabi'una da'i. On that day, they will follow, yattabi'una da'i. They are going to follow the caller. Da'i means caller. Um to the plains where are they going to follow the caller la ibajalahu there is not going to be any crooked crookedness meaning it's just going to be one path when they are going to be called on the day of uh, judgment to come and gather on the plains of gathering right the plains where the judgment is going to take place everybody is going to be raised back right everybody is going to be raised back from their graves and they're going to follow just one route there's not going to be any left or right it's just going to be one route and there is not going to be any escape from it that's what la ibajalahu is also implying to or alluding to who is this da'i who is this caller will some reports mentioned that it's going to be Israfil who's going to be blowing the trumpet but then again um, even the fact that Isra, the name of the angel who's going we know an angel is going to be blowing the trumpet but is it going to be Israfil is it going to be an, or is it going to be another angel well that is not really confirmed through traditions and I'm not going to go into that but know that this dari this caller it's referring to the one who blows the trumpet according to Jalalain right and what else is going to happen here? Wahashatil Aswatu Lir Rahman and all the voices Aswat, all the voices, Hasha'at, will become humbled or uh, hushed or overwhelmed, right? This means to become overwhelmed or hushed. All the voices will become hushed in front of Rahman. I mean, imagine standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Fala tasma' illa. Hamsa, and um, you will not hear anything except for the except for Hamsa, meaning uh, it's um, whis whispers you can say, but literally what it means is the sound of the footsteps, right? Just that mimics the sound of uh, camels when they're walking. 
it's going to be absolute silence. You're just going to be hearing footsteps. That's all. Nothing else. Imagine billions and billions of people and all you hear is footsteps and those footsteps are going to be similar or it's going to be mimicking the footsteps of the camels. When you're trying to speak on the day of judgment, your voice does not come out, right? And the only sound that you get to hear is the movement of your feet. That's it. Subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that fate. 109, yawma idhin la tanfa'u shafa'a. Also, what else, what, what, what other description is provided of that day? That um, shafa'a will not benefit anyone on that day. Shafa'a means what? Plain and simple recommendation letters, right? So no one will be able to recommend for anyone on the day of judgment, illa except man adina lahu rahman, except the one who Allah subhanahu wa taala permits, yani ar rahman permits adina wa radiya lahu qawla, or Allah approves. Okay, Allah approves His word, right? Meaning He gives him giving someone permission to speak on the day of judgment is a mercy big enough and on top of that this person is not only able to speak for himself but he's also able to speak for somebody else think about that incredible mercy on the day of judgment and this right we know will be given to our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he will be making recommendations he will be sending out those recommendation letters for who for the people of his ummah and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the reality, the truth, the, 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 the expanse of his knowledge. And he says, He knows that which is in front of them. And this is referring to the affairs of the Akhirah right and that which is behind them which is referring to the affairs of the dunya they will not be able to comprehend him in terms of knowledge yani describing Allah's knowledge in terms of his expanse in terms of it being limitless and then in ayah number 111 and all the faces will be humbled before al-hay the ever-living and al-qayyum the sustaining embarrassment humiliation all of it will take over so it's not just the fear and the one who is the one who is carrying the wrong I mean, zulma over here refers to wrong. The one who is carrying the wrong. Wrong of what? Wrong of um, the, uh, the 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 wrong of the burden of the sins that they committed. Right? What does it lead them to? It only leads them to their ruin. Waqad khaba. They have surely lost. Right? They're surely in loss. All of this is then followed by the mention of uh, the people who do the right, who listen to or who submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as is the style of the Quran. After talking about the negative, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also presents the positive. And here we have the believers in 112. So we have those who are carrying the burdens of their sin on the day of judgment, and those and now those who have done the few righteous deeds, as salihat, you know, the plural, this is a sound plural, right? It's a sound plural, and sound plurals, they are usually used for numbers between three and three to nine. Don't take it literally. It's not like, okay, I just do anything between three to nine good deeds and I'm good. No, it's just to get the point across that um salih it's it, it, to get the point across that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at the quantity okay at the quantity of your good deeds but he's looking at the quality of your good deeds the ones that you really struggled and really fought yourself with in order to do them in order to perform them all those acts of obedience allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to them and saying whoever does those acts of obedience mu'min, and then there is a condition while he's a believer right um fala yakhafu zulma he does not have fear or he will not fear any wrongdoing right what kind of wrongdoing such as an increase in his sins right wala hadma or he will also not fear any deprivation okay deprivation 
that is by taking away from someone's good meaning if some whatever a believer has done the good that he has come with it's not like that good will be erased or wiped out by adding this or mixing it with sins the good is going to remain the good and the, he will it, he will not be deprived of the reward that he's entitled to because of the good that he has done in this dunya regardless of the sins he may have committed because his regret was sincere because his tawbah the turning around to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was full of remorse he humbled himself he acknowledged his sins in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says because of that sincerity and intention all his sins have been for forgiven and those have been set aside and now he stands on the plains of the day of judgment with all his good and he can expect that he will be rewarded for what he has come with right he's being reassured that there will be no injustice or lack of appreciation so when we mention the word over here dhulma we're saying we're implying that there's not going to be any injustice and then when we say hadma meaning there's not going to be a lack of appreciation for their good works that's what is being implied but um Zulma literally means injustice and hadma really means um deprivation by taking away from their good deprivation right what kind of deprivation by taking away from their good or by lessening their good um ayah 113 Arabiya. allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now again continues about the quran and says that just like we sent down these stories right we spoke about the stories of musa alayhi islam just like we sent it's not that we just gave you stories and we let it be we also sent you something else what did we send we sent down we sent it down as quran and arabian similarly we sent it the it over here referring to quran we sent it down we sent this reminder down in what language in arabic language quran and arabian in terms of its richness eloquence and beauty right and then what else did we do? Just made it beautiful in terms of language? No. وَصَرَّفْنَا فِيهِ مِنَ الْوَعِيدِ وَصَرَّفْنَا صَرَّفَ يُصَرِّفُ means to clarify completely over and over and over again, multiple times, right? We over and over clarified, clarified what? All kinds of warnings. Sometimes we're talking about people being gathered. Like over here, we see people being gathered on the day of judgment. We're talking about how even voices will not be able to come out. It's just going to be hushed. It's just going to be whispers on the day. And then there are other scenarios from the day of judgment that man is constantly being reminded and he's being reminded in a language that is easy to understand over and over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is presenting this why he's talking about this why maybe maybe example a didn't get to you maybe b will get to you maybe c will get to you whatever it takes whatever it takes if, if the mention of punishment is what gets you to open up your eyes and turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it's the mention of the bliss and the pleasure and the eternal joys of Jannah, whatever it is, we are we are going to put it all out here in this ayah. It's particularly referring to the punishments to the warnings that he has to the to the warnings that he has constantly mentioned in this surah and other places in the Quran in terms of the description for those punishment. Why again? So that you make that very necessary U-turn, right? It's time sensitive, if we can say it in any other way. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ Again, Allah says, perhaps they will become conscious. What's the purpose of doing all of this? Perhaps they will become con conscious. أَوْ يُحْدِثُ لَهُمْ ذِكْرًا Or perhaps they will become reminded, right? It will, it will make it seem like maybe punishment description of punishment a did not do anything for them description of punishment b maybe that will open up their eyes right and it will be like oh my god this for the first it, it's as if they're hearing for the first time and they feel rejuvenated with this reminder every opportunity that they read the quran they will find a new reminder in it only only if they open their eyes right 114 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the malik and the haq he is the true king malik king haq true right he is the true king ta'ala how exalted he is now this is um a perfect mention of uh, the 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 the, the, the kingship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, descri the description for the kingship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as opposed to the mention of the false king on uh, that was mentioned in this surah and who was that false king Fir'aun right 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here, continues, continuing talking to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Wala ta'ajal bil Quran. Do not rush with the Quran, meaning do not rush to memorize the Quran. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he would repeat after Angel Jibreel, right, when revelation would come out, he would rush fearing that otherwise he'll forget. Right? So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he concludes all this He's after talking about what's going to happen to the disbelievers on the day of judgment. He's talking about what's going to happen to the believers on the day of judgment, presenting that whole scenario, giving a vivid description, a moving description of the consequences of the deeds of the disbelievers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well, your job is what? Your job is only to communicate. You cannot do anything. You have given both scenarios. You've described A, you've described B. Now, you just do your part, which is to convey the message. And as you're conveying the message, don't think the burden is on you to preserve this message. This message is our responsibility. We have sent this message with a purpose, and we will see to it that its purpose is fulfilled. Your job is only to take it from us and communicate and convey to the people. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now turns back to him and he says, Wala ta'ajal bil Quran. Right? Do not rush with the Quran. Do not it's the responsibility of who? It's the responsibility of Al Malikul Haq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is in charge, right? Do not rush with the Quran. Min qabli ay yaqda ilayka wahyuhu. Before its revelation is completed. Ay yuqda. Before its revelation is completed to you. Before here. Min qabl. Before its revelation is completed to you. If anything, you need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, or if there's anything that you need to do, that is what, وَقُرْ رَبِّ zidni ilma. Say, my Rabb, increase me in terms of knowledge. You know, it's very uh, profound, this dua. Of course, with Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this, we know what it means, right? Um, if, if, if there is any increase that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ever asked in his life, it is for increase in knowledge. But when we make this um, dua, what is it that we are asking for? Or as Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asking for, increase me in my knowledge, what was he asking for literally, like, just give me more knowledge. No, in other words, what he's asking for is as you give me this knowledge, also give me the ability to apply this knowledge, right? To live this knowledge so that I can I, I can be the embodiment of this beautiful message and then be a role model for it. And that's how we need to think about it, right? Imagine the hours we have spent or the hours we spent in absorbing all this knowledge on a daily basis just think about surah taha how many hours you have gone through just listening to surah taha writing those notes right but the question that you need to ask yourself and as we conclude today's session what you need to ask yourself is is this knowledge making me and you a better person make me a better person through knowledge that is the that is what is implied through this dua if we can reflect on that right inshallah it will be one great milestone achieved may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease in our journey and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept inshallah we go in we move into the last leg of uh, this uh, surah which is from ayah number 115 we, Possibly we'll finish it in one session or maybe we'll need two. But from ayah number 115, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transitions to the story of Adam alayhi salam. Now, what's the connection there? How does this communication flow? Let's find. Let, we'll, we'll see that in the next session. But for now, we started with the discussion of Quran, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hey, this Quran is not supposed to make your life difficult. We are going to grant you ease. And then ex while explaining that, he gave the story of Musa alayhi salam. After being done with the story of Musa alayhi salam, he took him back to Quran and he says well these are the purposes of Quran it's supposed to be a reminder reminder for both the believers and the disbelievers but someone who uh, turns away reminder for humanity sorry and and of course depending on the response to that reminder humanity branches into two which is believers and disbelievers and the one who turns away from it willfully this is the consequence and the one who embraces it this is going to be the consequence after all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again goes back to conclude this discussion with Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the role of Quran in our lives, he says that your job is only to convey it, 
right? If there's anything that you want to really pray for, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the knowledge that that helps you become the role model that you need to be in order to um, in order to uh, convey this message most effectively. Of course, he was the role model. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him, had given him that tawfiq. It's a no-brainer. But through Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us what is it, how is it that, that we can benefit most from this Quran and that is that switch in the attitude. This knowledge is not just to fill up the space in my brains, but it is to make me a better person. Subhana rabbika rabbil ikhtati amma yasifun. Salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.